Good morning. I welcome you all in the wonderful and blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It truly is an honor to share God's word with you this morning. And I pray that as I share it with you, that his word will transform you and renew you in Jesus' name. But before we get to the word, let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, that this is the day that you have made. And thank you, Lord, for your word. May your word transform and inspire us this morning. And may you teach us to love you just as you love us. And Father, bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I'd like to share with you from Matthew chapter 7, verses 12 to 14. Matthew chapter 7, verses 12 to 14. It reads, So whatever you do, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. May God bless this reading of his word. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, Therefore, whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Matthew 7 verse 12. It's really very simple. And that's part of the genius of this verse. It is a simple summary of Christian ethics. Or the way that we should treat other people. In one easy verse. Treat others the way that you want others to treat you. First off. This verse makes an important point that many people need to hear. It matters how you treat other people. Christianity is not just about our personal vertical relationship with God, but about our horizontal relationships with other people as well. It is just like Jesus said Later in Matthew, the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart and soul and mind and might. But the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, Christianity is not just about you and God. It is also very much about your fellowship with other Christians and the way that you treat other people. That's the answer to the old question. Why can't I just be a good Christian and worship God on my own? Because Christianity is not just about you and God only. But it's not. It is also about your fellowship with other people. There are so many one another commands in the New Testament. That we can only obey, obey by living them out in fellowship with other people. This verse reminds us of that. Christianity is not just about you and God. It is about the way that you treat other people as well. And in these verses, Jesus is commanding us to have an outward focus. Think about other people. Quite honestly, this is a good word for many of us who tend to be so focused on ourselves and our own perceived needs. It's not only all about us. It's not all about our problems, our needs, what's best for us. Jesus is saying, think about other people, what their needs are, how they feel. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 21, God commanded his people, You shall not wrong a stranger or oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. In other words, he was telling them, You know what that is, is like to be living in a foreign country. You went through that when you were in Egypt. You know how lonely it can be to be away from your homeland, how people can look down on you because you are not one of them. Let the things that you have experienced in life, for good and for bad, help you to understand other people and to guide you to do what is best for others. 
do for them what you'd want them to do for you think about other people and what they need observe too that this command is not just how you are to treat some people our family or christian brothers or, or, or brothers or sisters or church members only but it is meant for about how you treat all people the greek bible word here is anthropoi it means people in general so this command applies to everyone you meet there is no one you know to whom this verse does not apply it is for everyone and notice that jesus did not say treat people the way they treat you no people may treat you badly but that is not the way he tells you to treat others instead he says treat them the way you want to be treated that is a big difference right treating other people the way they treat you is just the old eye for an eye do back to them what they did to you but that is not what jesus tells us to do here he says treat them the way they should treat you the way you want to be treated by them in other words don't give that person the kind of present you know they are going to give you give them the kind of present you'd want them to give you that's a whole different thing isn't it and then notice the positive nature of Jesus' command here. Yeah. There were some similar sayings to this in history even before Jesus' time. But they were almost all negative. Don't do to anyone anything you wouldn't want them to do to you. And that's not a bad rule. But as usual, Jesus takes it so much further to not do something to somebody you just don't have to do anything you could just leave them entirely alone and fulfill that but jesus says i want you to be actively doing the good for them that you'd want them doing for you it calls for positive action on our part do do for them what you'd want done for you so that's what the golden rule means true godly religion is not just all about you so be outwardly focused and involved with other people and do positively for everyone you encounter what you would want them to do for you so how do we apply this what does this look like on a practical basis we could literally be here the whole week giving examples because as we shall see it applies to everything but let me share just a few examples of what this looks like in real life first in context it continues the thought of matthew chapter 7 verse 1 where jesus commanded us not to judge we saw that there uh, we saw that that does not mean that we can never say that anything is morally or doctrinally wrong but it does mean that we don't jump to conclusions about people when all the information is not in our hands or that we don't judge their motives or their heart when we can't know what that is we all want people to give us the benefit of the doubt right so do that for others. Treat them the way that you would want to be treated. It applies in all our personal relationships. You don't want to be always remembered for your worst mistake, do you? You want people to see past that, right? So stop treating other people that way. Treat them the way you want to be treated. Think about the golden rule before you pass some juicy gossip along would you want someone saying that kind of thing about you then don't you tell about them the golden rule applies in business how many times do people say things like business is business and sometimes even christian people seem to act like there is some kind of a line of distinction 
between the business and the faith. But the Bible makes it very clear. There is no distinction. Jesus is to affect the way you do business. And specifically, yeah, Jesus says you should ask yourself if you are treating your customer or the person you are doing business with the way that you would want to be treated on the other side of that business deal. Now, this is an amazing and useful verse. But some people take this too far as if keeping the golden rule was all the religion they needed. In fact, if you ask people, many of them will say something like, I will just keep the golden rule and that's good enough. That will get me into heaven. But there is a couple of problems with this. First, it ignores the context of this verse. Pretty much everyone is familiar with the golden rule. But most people are not familiar with its context, which is important specifically because of the word therefore. What, why, does this, why does this verse begin with therefore? The word therefore always points back to something that came before. So one of the often overlooked things about the golden rule is that it begins with this word therefore. Jesus is trying to Jesus is tying it back to what he has just said about asking God for the needs we have, including our salvation. Remember, we saw last week that Jesus said, don't go throwing your pearls before the swine of the religious Christians or charlatans. Ask God and he will save you. You don't deserve it, but because of his great mercy and grace, he loves you and sent Jesus to die for you and he will forgive you if you ask him so in this light of so in this light of that then that Jesus says therefore because God as your heavenly father is so gracious to you and he just gives you the good things you ask for including salvation therefore because of that now you will treat other people the way you want to be treated. So see, this verse is not in a vacuum. Your motivation for treating other people graciously is because God has already been gracious to you. If you, want, if you have not experienced the grace of God, then you will have no desire or power to treat others graciously like the Golden Rule teachers. So, the, so therefore, yar, the year is vital. The only way you can keep this verse in response to the grace of God in Jesus Christ, which is working in your life. So you can't just say, I am going to keep the golden rule and go to heaven. We don't keep the golden rule to earn salvation. We are doing it, therefore, because of what God has already done and has already given us. In his salvation this is a huge difference the second thing is you can't keep this to earn your salvation no one has ever treated everyone they meet just how they would want to be treated think about this the golden rule is not new is it we've had it for 2,000 years everybody knows it the problems of our world today are not here because people don't know they should live by the golden rule. No, the problem is we have known the golden rule for over 2,000 years and nobody has kept it because we are sinners. And this is our problem. You can't keep the golden rule to go to heaven. You've known the golden rule all your life and you've broken it more times than you can count. And so have I. And we're going to break it. Even tomorrow we will break it again. See, we all know the golden rule, but we all fall short of it. Which is exactly what Romans 3 verse 23 says. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So the golden rule reminds us that none of us have lived up to God's standards. If getting to heaven were just up to keeping the golden rule, none of us would get there. Finally, 
This is why the Bible says we need a Savior. And that's why Jesus came. He came to teach us God's truth. Yes, to show us the right way to live by the golden rule. But he also knew that none of us could keep it. So he came to die on the cross to pay for our violations of the golden rule. So that if we would admit our failures and trust what he did on the cross to save us. That we could be forgiven. And he would send his Holy Spirit into our lives to help us follow him. And then one day we will live with him in heaven forever. Therefore in conclusion, none of us will be in heaven because we've kept the golden rule. Because we haven't. Now, does that mean we don't try? No, we should try and try and try and try again. We're to pray and ask God to help us apply this golden rule in every circumstance of our life. Just don't be surprised when you fall short of it. When it happens, ask God to forgive you by His grace in Jesus Christ. And when others don't treat you by the golden rule, then you forgive them too. Because remember, Jesus commands you to do for others what you want others to do for you. Amen. Let us pray for this word. Lord, thank you for this word. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that if we want to see good in our lives, we need to do good for others. And so, Lord, we just pray. May we do and fulfill your golden rule. And, Lord, if we fail, may we know that you forgive and that you set us right. Indeed, Lord, thank you for your grace, mercy, and love to us. And be with us, be with us as we continue to trust in you. I pray that you have, we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray that you have a wonderful week, that God will bless you and keep you. Goodbye. <laughs>